Welcome everyone. In this ukulele lesson, I'm going to teach you how to play Both Sides Now by Joni Mitchell. I've created a ukulele friendly arrangement. Really excited to share this beautiful song with you. Thank you very much for joining me for this live broadcast. And if you're watching as a replay or live, please leave a comment in the section down below and let me know where you are coming from. Hope you're doing well. I have created a free song sheet for you. I have a whole bunch of screenshots for it. from it right here. We're going to be led through the verses and the choruses of this song. And there's a link down below where you can get this. So please check the links in the video description below to download that free song sheet. And while you're down there in the links below, please sign the mailing list for Ukulele Zen. I have a lot of really great events planned. I'm going to be launching later this month or at the beginning of next month, my long awaited chord solo book volume two. It's going to have all kinds of video tutorials to accompany it. I'm so excited to share that with you. So please sign the mailing list down below to keep in the loop of everything that's going on. Of course, I want to say hello to everybody who is here. So we're going to say hello to some of the folks in the chat and to give you an overview of this lesson, we are going to be exploring this song from both sides. We're going to be playing it in a free rhythmic way. I'm also going to be sharing with you a nice percussive way to pluck and tap or strum and tap. And also we'll teach you a nice introduction for this song. So thank you very much. Thanks to everybody who has requested this uh, lesson and I hope that you are doing well. Let's say hello to a few folks in the chat and please let me know where you are. Hello, Randall, glad you're here from Hawaii. Czech Republic in the house, hello, how are you doing? And Collins, glad you're here. Jefferson is in the house, Patricia, so glad you're here again. And uh, Jefferson in the house from Tampa Bay. I feel like I'm in Tampa Bay right now. By the end of this lesson, I may be uh, very sweaty. <laughs> it's hot up here in Vermont. I hope you're doing well everywhere you are. Um, and uh, Munich, Germany is in the house. Glad you're here. Jim Nugent's in the house from New Jersey. We got folks all the way from Alberta, Canada, Whidbey Island. Oh, this is great. Thank you all for joining me. Jake is here from the Netherlands. Paris is in the house. Thank you very much, Michelle, for joining me again. Divine Mother Wisdom is in the house. Yes, Joni Mitchell recently broke the internet. Uh, I don't know if you saw this. Uh, hopefully you have seen this um, clip of this very song. She recently uh, re performed for the first time in nine years after suffering a brain aneurysm and some other health issues. It was a very moving performance. I've received maybe 30 different emails and messages requesting a lesson on the song. So I figured let's do this for the live stream lesson for this month. I want to jump right into the lesson just to let you know these live stream lessons happen the first Sunday of the month right here at the channel, Ukulele Zen. Uh, a lot of people in the chat saying they did see the clip. So moving, such a beautiful, touching song. So um, let's get right into it. Um, I wanted to share this with you and I can make it larger as well as we uh, get more into it. Let's begin by warming up before we get into the introduction and everything that's going to come later in this lesson. Let's just warm up and play it in a free rhythmic way. At the very end of this lesson, we will play the entire song all the way through. And at the very, very end of this lesson, I will lead you through a simple mindfulness meditation to bring you more peace, clarity and stability. So hope you'll stick around for the whole lesson. Thanks for being here. So let's begin in a free rhythmic way. G. Rose and flows of angel hair and ice cream castles in the air and feather canyons everywhere. I've looked at clouds that way 
Now we're going to move on to the second half of this verse, but I just want to point out a couple of details of these chords. The change from G to G major 7. Now, this is a beautiful chord. It's a very colorful chord. When you're on G major, lift off these fingers and pivot on your first finger and just flatten it across all the strings. And you might like to just isolate that motion, make that a comfortable transition for you. And of course, if you're more comfortable to do so, you can play G major 7 with three fingers. All right. So you'll also notice that as we look at this song sheet, it's a very free-flowing song. Sometimes the chords land on the words. Sometimes they land off of the words. I hope that this range is easy for you to sing. Uh, making a ukulele version of this was a little tricky because Joni Mitchell's original recording, she's playing a guitar in an open D tuning that's capoed at the fourth fret to put it in the key of F sharp. <laughs> what? In other words, if you listen to the original, Joni's playing is actually quite intricate. It's a tricky key to emulate on the ukulele. The closest way for us to play it is to be in the key of G, and that's what I chose. Let's take it now from, but now they only block the sun, okay? One, two, three, four. But now they only block the sun. They rain and snow on everyone. So many things I would have done, but clouds got in my way. We will be going over all the melodies and all the chords. Let's block it out right now, the chorus. Okay, here we go. G, two, three, four. Four. I've looked at clouds from both sides now, from up and down, and still somehow it's clouds illusions I recall. I really don't know clouds. lesson very soon I'm gonna be sharing you sharing with you this rhythmic way of playing it how you doing so far all right friends thank you for joining me let's go through this chorus and just pinpoint a couple of melody notes and uh, some ways that you can uh, find these on your ukulele to help you sing so we start here I've looked at clouds from both sides now, from up and down, and still somehow, how, how, excuse me, how, <laughs> it goes down to this note, D. From up and down, and still somehow. Next, we get to the G major 7. And as we play the G major 7, the melodic pitch we're singing is the F sharp found right here at the second fret of the second string. It's clouds illusions I recall. So to find those pitches, we are going to play slowly. Why don't you join with me? It's clouds illu, then open E, gens, second fret of the third string, a D, I, and then low G, recall. Play this on a high G ukulele, it's totally fine. If you have the low G, then you will have that pitch. So when we put this all together, it's clouds illusions. I recall, I really don't know like clouds at all. And then you get to this outro. If you're just joining me, we're going to play the whole tune start to finish, but we're just blocking out each little section. When you get to this uh, 
section at all. You can bounce back and forth between G and C. And a very nice thing to do, that sounds great. But if you want to make it even more colorful, what you would do is you would, when you change to C, leave this index finger down, place your C there, and then you get a C add nine chord floaty cloud-like chord. When we play these together, very lovely sound. We'll be adding more rhythm soon. And just so you know, this is the chord we're looking at right here. C add nine. You're adding a D, the second fret of the third string. Okay. So let's try the chorus one more time. Strum however you feel comfortable. I'll show you a specific rhythm I like later. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. I've looked at clouds from both sides now, from up and down, and still somehow it's clouds illusions I recall. I really don't know clouds. Take your time here at all. All right, you can play this free time or begin to add some more rhythm. How you feeling so far, friends? I hope you are doing well. As I said at the beginning of the broadcast, it's very, very hot here. I should have brought a towel. I feel like I'm in a, <laughs> I'm in a sauna up here. Uh, thank you for keeping cool with me. Hope you're keeping cool. Let's move on to the second verse. Then we're going to play the second chorus. I will show you a nice rhythm to play. But for right now, let's keep it simple. Let's get comfortable with singing the melody. If it's all right with you, I'd like to take just one minute, maybe two minutes, and just share a little something about singing. When singing, it's always a good idea to support your voice with deep diaphragmatic breathing. It's very relaxing, nourishing for your body as you deeply oxygenate your blood. So breathe in deeply, fill your belly up with air. And instead of singing from the top of your lungs, try this, let a little bit out like you're sighing. Just try that with me right now, a couple of sighs. As you sigh again and again, keep your throat very soft. One more, please. Next, we're going to allow that sigh to settle into the pitch you want to sing. Moons and Junes and Ferris wheels. This is very different than singing and from the top of the lungs, where you fill up the lungs, moons and ju and where you feel like you're pushing. So this is a lot that we could explore, but just the very brief teaching on this would be to imagine that your lungs are like balloons and you're letting a little bit of air out of the balloon. Moons and junes and ferris wheels. Oons and Junes and Ferris wheels. Keep it soft. Keep your attention on it being soft and in tune. And last thing, give yourself a big pat on the back for just showing up and trying, you know? All right, we're here to have a good time. This channel is called Ukulele Zen because the whole idea is to have an experience of ease in our playing which can be carried into other areas of our life. There is no way to ease. Ease is the way. So we practice ease. Just strum in a gentle way. Allow your voice to sigh and smile at any out of tune notes, okay? Everything's welcome here. Are you ready? One, two, breathe in. Moons and Jews and Ferris wheels. The dancing dizzy way you feel as every fairy tale.
becomes real I've looked at love that way Keep it simple in the strum for now But now it's just another show You leave them laughing when you go And if you care, don't let them know don't give yourself away Let's move on to the chorus I've looked at love from both sides now From give and take And still somehow It's love's illusions I recall I really don't know love Add nine. High fives to you. I have some more to share. So let's just take a break right now for just a few seconds. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate y'all being here. Many thanks to all the generous patrons and members who support this channel. Please check the links down below for a free song sheet. You can download it. It's at a public post at my membership site please sign the mailing list for Ukulele Zen so you can keep in the loop of my new membership site that's going to have so many awesome things for you. I have a new uh, chord solo book coming out very soon and some live webinars that I think you're going to enjoy a lot. So thanks for being here. Appreciate you being here and for just jumping in with this beautiful song. Now I'd like to show you before we move on with the rest of the song and play it all the way through, I'd like to show you this introduction. It's not hard to play. It really isn't. And um, this pluck tap is one of the cool, cool rhythms you can do. Let me just demo a little bit for you. So you can play this song with a relaxed free time that I was just playing and you were playing. Or you can start to bring this percussive feel. And this intro can be built upon. And I'm going to be sharing that with you right now. Just so you know, if you're a member of the Patreon community at one of the upper levels, You'll get a special lesson in a tablature for what I just played. It's not hard to play, but it's helpful to have it all tabbed out. Now, friends, this introduction begins with a G chord, so please strum your G chord. And let's take our four fingers, place them on the four strings, one, two, three, four, okay? And that's thumb, index, middle, ring, all on their own strings. They each get their own territory. And pinch every string at the same time. So pluck, pinch, and then you're going to tap. Now you can tap in a lot of ways. You could just tap the ukulele. You may like to just touch the strings with the back of the fingernails. Pluck, tap. You may like to pluck and tap with your thumb, almost like a funk bass player tapping the strings, getting that snap of the strings against the frets, all right? But just try this out. You're going to go pluck, tap, then pluck, index only, tap. I'll do this three times slowly so you can lock it in. Three, four, pluck, tap, pluck, index, tap, pluck, tap, Pluck, index, tap. Again, pluck, tap, pluck, index, tap. That's the backbone of it. There's more to it, but just get that coordination together. You can see how tapping with the back of the nails is a nice choice because then your fingers land right back on the strings. Let's try this now with the introduction chords, and then we're going to add a little more funk to the rhythm. Okay, the first chord is G. Now, play this one of my favorite chords, the D sus chord. Open, second fret, second fret, open. Yeah, so we go from G to this beautiful D suspended chord. There's a lot of names to that chord. Let's just call it D sus for now. 
then we're going to go to a C chord and then back to G. You know, you can watch this video as many times as you like, of course, here on YouTube. So practice along with me. I'll go nice and slow and then I'm going to funk it up a little bit. Two, three, four. Pluck, tap, pluck. It's actually harder to do it slow. <laughs> How you feeling? Let me know in the comments down below. Is it tricky? Good. That means you're learning, right? You've reached a growing edge. Practice with this. Check it out. You go pluck, tap, and then when I pluck the next chord, I use just these three fingers, no thumb. Index, tap. All right. Now here's where the funk comes in. This right here, the second tap. Let's have it arrive a little earlier or just a little bit earlier. It will be anticipated, and that will give this feeling. Instead of right on beat three, like this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which is cool, but we can get even more funk with it when we make beat three uh, arrive a little earlier than beat three. Check it out. Three, watch me, please. So it's a little early. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and a one, and two. <laughs> so I notated it this way to make it easy for you to learn. And then, of course, I'll be going over this in more detail in the bonus content for members. Check the links down below if you want to be one. Um, Thank you for joining me for this lesson one more time, and then we're going to add the embellishment up top. I don't expect you to get this right away. If you do, um, I'll have this expression on my face and celebrate you. But the chances are it'll take a few repetitions. It took me a few repetitions. There's quite a bit of nuance to it. And this is where our practice can become relaxing and meditative. We're not in a hurry. The rest of life is a hurry sometimes practice is slowing down so check it out we'll do this thank you eric that's very generous and i appreciate your your support thank you so we go one and two what you're gonna find is that little fills of the fingers will start to happen almost automatically. Let me just do my thing for a sec because uh, it would be helpful if I just play for a bit. See, just little things come in. One, two, and three, and four, and four. A little uh, uh. Top of the chord, bottom of the chord. Follow your instincts, follow your gut. All right, last thing before we get back into singing and playing the whole song are these little melodic embellishments. And this will all be tabbed out in a, you know, sometime next week, there'll be a bonus lesson at the page. And all we're doing is we are plucking the top string with our ring finger. I'm dropping my pinky right there, taking it off. Then I go to the next chord early, go to the C chord, I gotta stretch out my pinky, or you could play C like this, and then go to G. There's all kinds of ways you can personalize your fingering to make it, you know, cool for your hand. When we put this all together, I'm gonna do it fast and then slow. It sounds like this. This is not 
not only a nice introduction, but you can put it in between the verses at the end of the chorus. And I'll show you in a moment. So glad you're here. Hey, I didn't mention, are you subscribed to the channel? Click the subscribe button. I appreciate that. Give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. High fives for you, to you, for showing up and playing this song with me. I really appreciate you being here. So rewind this section of the video when you want to get this section down. And the trick is to get that ring finger to pluck that top string and let that melody sing on top. Now, as you practice, if you go slower, you might find this to be very enjoyable to slow down. Notice I take my hand off the instrument, taking a sip of my tea, and I'll try again. So when you practice, you may like to just try it once. Hands off, I know you want to do it again, but just hands off, take a sip of tea, or just take a sec to relax your hand. It only takes three to five seconds, but your body will integrate what you've learned. What we often do, and what I used to do when I practiced, was I would get right back on the treadmill and repeat it again and again and again, sometimes repeating a mistake. So the Zen, quote, Zen approach would be to stop to look and be aware of what we're doing and enjoy it's so in this way your your practice becomes more effective and really enjoyable and if it doesn't show up like that you are gaining more clarity about what you need to do because you're going slower you're taking it easy and uh, you make progress. When we actually make progress, we feel more motivated to show up again, right? We feel successful. All right, friends, I appreciate you being here. Uh, I know we've spent a little bit of time on this, and in the future, there'll be a whole course about essential strums and percussive stuff. There's another way to do this with strums. It's essentially the same rhythm, but what you do is you go down with the, with the strum finger, and then you tap, and I like to go down with my thumb, and then up with my index, and then I tap again, and then up. And the up could be your index, it could be your ring, it could be anything, really. When you put this all together, you get a nice, funky, laid-back um, strum. Thank you, Damien. Thank you, Sonny, for your generous support. I truly appreciate everybody being here. Check it out. This is a cool strum. It's worth sitting with. And once you get the skeleton of it, the fills, the little extra up-downs will start to come. And if they don't, that's cool. Take it slow. Get the basic uh, way of playing it down. And it will come. All right, friends. I appreciate you being here. Come on, let's, let's play this again. This song, so beautiful. I've received so many sweet messages from people telling me how this song uh, is so meaningful to them. And it's meaningful to me as well. And I'm really glad that you decided to join me today. Check the links down below to get your own song sheet, to join the community, sign the mailing list, and uh, appreciate your support. Thank you. All right, let's play the whole thing all the way through. Strum as you like. Keep it mellow. Keep it spacious. Try the uh, percussive thing. Whatever you want to do. All right, let's do it. One, two... One, two, three, four. This is the introduction. I apologize, friends. I'm so sorry. I need to tune. I see some folks are here from London, Ontario. Soup. I visited soup. 
many years ago. I think it was almost 10 years ago. Thank you for joining me. All right, friends. Let's begin with that introduction. Remember, it's these four chords, three chords, and uh, let's get into it. Play from the heart. Start on G, G, D sus4, C. One more time and then we'll sing.
one more time. Everybody, thank you so much. Big hand for you all for showing up, for joining in with me. I hope you'll watch this video again um, to squeeze a little more nectar out of this lesson. This uh, rhythmic strum is, of course, not the only way to play it. Play this in a very free way. You can find your own rhythm into it. Just so you know, if you do choose to play uh, this rhythm and you anticipate beat three, then the chords arrive a little early as well, All right? So if you're playing, I've looked at life from both sides now. See, it came early. From win and lose, and still somehow. So if the strum arrives early, if that pluck arrives before beat three, then the chord also arrives on beat three. Wanted to offer something a bit more rhythmic for those who would like to play it that way. There are many, many ways to play a song, of course. Many ways to feed a cat. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Please check the links down below to get your copy of the song sheet and to sign the mailing list. I have a lot of great things planned for this month and beyond. Truly appreciate your support as a patron member. Uh, I wanted to take just a couple of questions and then oh, we could have a brief mindfulness meditation. And uh, I wanted to just uh, look back at the chat, see if there's any questions. Please drop a comment in the, in the uh, section down below. Any questions? I see that there are a lot of great comments. This song has obviously touched a lot of people. Uh, Eric uh, has, you know, memories of his mother playing the song. Sharon, thank you for being here. This is a beautiful song. I used to uh, play uh, this song when I was an artist in residence at a cancer hospital, and this was an often requested song at the bedside where uh, families and patients and staff would join in um, with healing and loving intentions for those who were suffering from cancer. I did that work for eight years at a cancer hospital. It was a beautiful song to know. Grant, I think, I guess I do have my middle finger planted. Yeah, it looks like it, but yeah, it's free. It lifts off a little bit. Good question, though. Um, and, oh, thank you. Iowa is in the house. Thank you so much. Danita, hey, is that what you look like? I love seeing pictures of people. Hey, if you are a uh, patron member, uh, if you are a patron member, you know that the second Sunday of the month, we get together like this, and you can ask me questions in advance, and I will directly address your questions. You can also beam in and have a private session with me where, you know, you get the spotlight for five minutes or so. You can say hi, there's no pressure, but you can play something for me or just ask a question about anything. And it's like having a master class in your living room. So that's one of the benefits of being a member at the uh, membership tier, $5 or higher. Can't wait to launch the new site. I don't see any questions in the um, comments down below, but I really appreciate you being here. How about we play the last verse and the last chorus, just to practice it. You want to do that? Does that sound good? Why don't we back up to verse 3, okay? You strum this any way you like. Let your voice settle, sighing into the pitches, relaxing yourself. And we'll play this in the final chorus. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Tears and fears and feeling proud to say I love you right out loud. Dreams and schemes and circus crowd. I've looked at life that way. But now old friends are acting strange They shake their heads 
they say I've changed. Well, something's lost and something's gained in living every day. I've looked at life from both sides now, from win and lose, and still somehow it's life's illusions I recall. I really don't know life at all. And last time. You're the best. Thank you for joining me. Hey, if you watched all the way to the end, I got one more little treat, chord treat for you. This one, it's, you know, when we move from A minor seven in living every day, the chord chart says to move from A minor seven to D. And that's the basic motion of the harmony. But if you want to make it a little more colorful, what you could do is you could move from A minor seven to a D seven. And then if you want to make it even more colorful, you add your ring finger to the third fret. You may like to use the middle finger. This is a D7 suspension. Very colorful sound. In living every day. And there's a lot of ways to use the suspension. You may like to go directly from the suspension. D7 sus directly to G. Notice if you use your ring finger, everything's kind of ready to go to G. It's nice. You can also move from D7 sus back to D7 and then to your G. These little, these small tweaks make for big peaks. You know, little colors, little additions of rhythm and, and harmonic colors can make a song really, really darling, uh, really beautiful. All right, I uh, appreciate you being here. Ukulele Bird, good question. Yeah, you can tune the whole thing down, but you will find that Joni plays a lot of extra chords because Joni was a, still is a great guitarist, but you know, back in the day, she really played some great guitar with that open tuning. So listen to the original. You'll find she put some little fills and extra chords in there. Phyllis, I hear you. I have a tissue in my pocket because I was expecting as well. I got teared up practicing for this, especially remembering all the touching moments that this song um, has reminded me of. Yeah, it was beautiful to see Joni at the, at the folk festival. And um, yeah, thank you. I am not frozen. I wish I was. It's hot here. <laughs> Friends, I would want to say thank you so much. Cheryl, I'm so sorry to hear about your loss. So very sorry. I hope you and your family are doing as well as you can. My sincere condolences to you and your family. You know, friends, this channel is about learning how to play ukulele, but it's also about bringing music into a lifestyle that promotes wellness, your music practice chair can become the most comfortable place in your house when we have a practice that is about slowing down and taking things one thing at a time. Music practice can be a great de-stressor and uh, that's what I really strive to share, especially in these longer form videos where I can go into more detail than I can in a short YouTube video. Let's end with a, uh, a brief mindfulness meditation. I appreciate you being here so very much. Please check the links down below in the video description. Share this video with your friends. I hope you and your families are doing well. Wherever you are, I invite you to place your feet on the floor, sit forward in your chair comfortably with your spine straight, and just come to stillness. We'll just spend three minutes 
being still and listening. What we're going to do is simply listen to this bell, close our eyes, and I'll guide you in a simple mindfulness meditation. As you come into stillness, Begin to bring your attention to your in-breath and your out-breath. This first step is so simple and also so profound. Recognizing our in-breath and our out-breath. And allow your consciousness to settle, just like your head settles on your pillow at night. Allow your consciousness to settle on the sensations, the physical sensations of breathing in and out. Just breathe naturally. And as you breathe in, notice where you feel your breathing. It might be at the tip of the nostrils, the back of the throat, in your chest, the rising and falling of your abdomen, And just allow your consciousness to remain connected, your mind and your body connected in the here and now. Breathing in, I know this is my in-breath. Breathing out, I know this is my out-breath. Bring all of your attention to the in-breath and the out-breath for just these few moments. Set aside any projects, any plans, and your mind settled on your in-breath and your out-breath. Keep your attention on your in-breath all the way from beginning until the end. If this mallet is your breath and this fingertip is your attention, we're training ourselves to keep our attention on the in-breath all the way from beginning to the end and on the out-breath, all the way from beginning until the end. Relax your body. Breathe in such a way that you settle. And trust your body's wisdom. It knows exactly how much oxygen you need. Follow your in-breath and your out-breath for just a few more moments and just listen. Breathing in, 
few more moments. And friends, if you can still hear my voice, that means that you're still breathing in and out. So please gently open your eyes, bring your instrument to your lap, and very slowly, with great curiosity, find one note, any note, anywhere on the ukulele neck, Play that note and listen to it like it was a singing bell. Ready? Let's do this all together. Three, two, one, let's play. And then release. Pick another note. Three, two, one. Three, Two, one, one last time. So, friends, I appreciate you joining me. What I just demonstrated is a wonderful way to begin and end your practice, and any time during your practice. Ultimately, the quality of our playing and the quality of our experience is based on our attention, and we can train our attention, our mindful attention, to stay anchored on the present moment, and sound is a very powerful way to do this because it doesn't last for very long. So f listen to your notes as they dissolve into silence. Thank you for showing up. Touch that stillness, and that stillness exists underneath even the most raucous, you know, metallica, heavy metal. There is stillness underneath it. And some music, of course, has more spaciousness, more stillness. It's easier to access that. Um, when we have a habit of returning to the moment, very often, especially if you do this during something difficult, if we stop and we start to listen to what's actually going on, it relaxes us and we can sometimes see very clearly what needs to be practiced. And then our, quote, mistakes are really our friends showing up to teach us. They're showing up to teach us. So invite your friends in for some tea. Invite your mistakes in for tea. Sit with them. See what they have brought for you. See what they have to teach for you. And eventually a, quote, mistake knows when it's no longer needed. And as you master that one passage, it won't show up again. If it does, oh, hey, there you are again. Thanks. <laughs> I guess I need to learn that. <laughs> All right, friends. There's a lot to share in future videos. I appreciate you joining me for this one. I appreciate you being part of this community. And if you want to go further, uh, please check the links down below. Sign the mailing list. Hope you'll give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Next week, patrons will have a special session where you can submit your own questions, beam in with your video. It's a, it's a feature that I love because I love to see your faces and interact with you more personally. All right, friends, much love, all the best. Sunny, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you being here. Um, everybody, many blessings to you and your families. And I'll see you next time. 
If you like this video, watch it again, and I hope it serves you well. Take good care and thanks.